Hello, it's some Bliss Fizzle here and welcome back to a long overdue episode of the podcast, Simply Do The Work. Now, I, I don't even know how long it's been since I actually sat down and recorded a podcast episode. I feel like it's been like at least over a month, definitely over a month. And so obviously I have, I have like a lot I want to talk about. I mean, there's a lot of things that I've been wanting to talk about, but the main thing and what I wrote down here in my notes and this will probably unless I come up with something else this is probably the episode title but protecting my inner peace while fighting for justice and basically I want to talk about just the theme of setting boundaries so if you're not yet subscribed or you're not following the podcast please do subscribe follow and share the podcast I will definitely make an effort to be a lot more consistent especially since it looks like i might be going back to res soon and lord knows recording from res will just it'll be a nightmare there'll be all types of background noise like even like the reason why i also picked today specifically to record is because i'm like home alone so it's pretty quiet today so about a week or two ago a friend of mine texted me asking for my thoughts and opinions on a video discussing breaking down gender identity and so you know i mean they did like sort of warn me and say yo i mean there might be things you don't like there might be something of things offensive in that video but he, they were saying that basically like it was really confusing to them because they're trying to be a lot more accommodating they're trying to be a lot more understanding but they, you know they're having trouble with that so me being me i'm like sure no problem send the link i'll watch and see what is happening I couldn't get past 10 seconds because that was just mess. That was that was just bigotry in its purest and dumbest form. And I think that for me was a, a, a clear reminder that yes, um, yes, you know, I do like appreciate and value that, you know, there are people who look up to me and, you know, want to hear my insight and my thoughts on things but there's just certain work I just I have to I, I can't engage in right I think two or three episodes ago I did a video talking about how people use Christianity to justify bigotry and if you listen to the episode you'll probably remember like I think I put at least like two trigger warnings in it like even in the show notes because I've always recognized and appreciated the fact that just because you're in a marginalized group doesn't mean you have to endure. Um, how can I say? It doesn't like, for example, right, with regards to the LGBT community, right? It's a lot of people who want to know, is it okay? Is it morally acceptable? Can you be LGBT and Christian? All of this, right? And those questions are very valid. But I do think we do a, a great disservice to the LGBT community when we expect them to engage with that work constantly all the time because it is quite traumatizing it is very triggering because the thing is in order for you to answer that question right those questions you have to deal with the objections people make against you right for example you wouldn't expect a black person to explain to a white person that like that why the racism is wrong. Okay, people do. That's not, like, how do I put it? Like, if a white person is coming and insulting a black person, denigrating them, saying all types of things, and if that black person just walked away from the conversation without really engaging, I think most of us will understand why we would, you know, we can almost empathize. Like, you know what, it makes sense why that person chose not to engage with that type of person. But I do sort of feel like where it comes to specifically like issues of gender identity and um, with homophobia, all of that, I feel like the marginalized are almost always expected to be present, to answer questions. And the thing is, sometimes it's kind of like the questions people ask aren't even, they're not even good questions. Like it's kind of like, like, why do you expect someone to answer these questions? The same like that video that that person sent to me, right? I could tell immediately that the person 
in this video because it was basically this person was interviewing various members of the LGBT community and just from the few seconds I heard, I could tell that the questioning wasn't to actually understand. It wasn't to actually be like, okay, look, I want to be an ally. How can I be an ally? No, it was basically trying to like throw gotcha questions, basically trying to trap. It was basically entrapment. It was literally entrapment. And I think that is where I actually remember I, I, say, I said to that person, I'm like, listen, I couldn't engage with this. I just, I couldn't. But... Here are a bunch of resources. Turn to that. Like, please. Like, I, I, I just, I cannot. I cannot. And the thing, I think it was the first time where I actually was in that position. I didn't feel guilty. Because sometimes I would feel guilty when I'd have to say to someone, listen, I can't answer this question for you. Because I do think it is quite unfair to also expect one person to represent their entire community, right? Because let's say you ask an LGBT person to explain themselves, which I think is just unfair. Like, wh like wh why do we need to explain ourselves time and time again? But let's say you do and their explanation dissatisfies you. I mean, it could be that, hello, not all of us are eloquent speakers, right? Like some people just, you know, you, like, you, I think we all know someone who is just terrible with their words, right? We know, like, it's because after some time, once I actually get to know them, you know, like, okay, this person just just sucks at articulating themselves they just cannot explain themselves like whenever they're talking whenever they're trying to make a point it comes across different from what they mean right and so that's why i do think that you know this is sort of me like speaking to allies of and you know I, this applies to any marginalized group whether it be gender race um sexual orientation right and i do think that people it's kind of it kind of feels like when you're marginalized you're not only dealing with your own trauma but you also need to nurse the feelings of the oppressors and it's because let's be let's be honest like if you're a black person and you walk into a very white space you're very aware like if those people are uncomfortable with your presence you are very aware of the discomfort you cause them as the lgbtq plus community we are very aware of how uncomfortable we make people in our existence in the way we present ourselves or the way we talk or our relationships and i do think that also right if you are listening to this and you are marginalized in any way just if you do find yourself in such spaces or you you do feel like, you know what, the person, what they're asking of me, people, the expectations are just too much. It's okay to be like, you know what, I can't do this, right? Because also, when I think of it, right, I've had, I've done the work for myself of, um, is it okay or do I deserve this? Like, you know, I've, I've been in many spaces where I was the only black person and so sometimes... I've found myself achieving things and wondering, did I get this because I deserve it or am I just a token black person? And so I've had to, I've done all that work for myself. And it's kind of like, I've moved past, am I okay? I've moved past, am I worth it, right? I'm working to, what? okay, what does it mean, right? What does it mean to live fully in my blackness, unashamed of it. What does it mean to embrace my queer identity? What does it mean? And, you know, for example, one way for me has always been through my hair. And I've spoken about this before, about how, you know, the fact that I would wear my, I'd grow my hair out and wear it in certain hairstyles. I recognized how in certain contexts, that was me shaking the table. Because, I mean, I even have strange, like, strangers coming up to me being pressed and telling me to cut my hair like you know you can you can just it's like why are you so offended like why are you so offended by me and basically that is what I really wanted to talk about um I know this is a bit like shorter than my other podcast episodes but I do feel like there's a lot more I do. Like, I do want to dip my toes into, for example, like, I do want to do, like, a deep dive on gender. And I'm actually currently, I'm currently doing a course on transgender theology because, you know, another, like, 
I'm also, the thing is, right, I feel like I live most of my life in fragmentation. I feel like I really compartmentalized a lot of parts of myself, like my sexuality was here, my gender identity was here, um, my race, ethnicity was here, like, you know, I'd be in some space to be like, hey, don't, don't, don't be too black in this space, you know, don't, don't be too much, don't be this, don't be that, and even, you know, entering in a spiritual context i had to leave certain parts of me and even it's kind of like now even when i'm doing like social justice work sometimes i do like one okay where and how does my spirituality fit into this how can i bring that to the table especially i think one of the biggest things for me right is how can i speak about my spirituality and my faith without being preachy without it being because the way that a lot of Christians, I believe, were taught is that we, we, we're supposed to share our faith to convert others. It's sort of like, and while I don't think that a lot of people, like, I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with it, but at the same time, I do find it a little bit manipulative. But that's just me. You know, I'm not trying to be too controversial. Um, but yeah. In this time that I've taken a break from making like these types of videos and podcasts, I've really, you know, done some introspection and stuff. I mean, not as much as before, but I think right now with the like the stuff I'm learning right now are setting like a new course for me. And hopefully you guys get to tag along. Like I feel like at this point I'm just rambling. So until I see you guys, well, until you hear from me in the next one. I love you so much. Bye, guys.